Hello, this is Life Questions, and I am your host, Bill Harris. This is a program that prides itself in looking deep and wide into the Word of God for answers to your many questions about life, questions that you have sent us. And given the fact that there are so many things going on in today's world, there's a lot to talk about. Today, we have a cadre of local ministers that has joined us after researching your questions, and they're here with their biblical insights. Let's meet them. Pastor Tim Benjamin of Wayne Street United Methodist Church, followed by Pastor Parker Miley of Walnut Grove United Methodist Church. And then there's Pastor Rick Shear of Living Hope Assembly of God. And rounding up our panel today, Pastor Bev Hurlbert of Grace Church and all of them hail from the community of St. Mary's. Yes. Happy to have you with us today. Yes, Happy to have you back, as a matter of fact. Well, let's get started. We've got some very juicy questions here to get at. Uh, <laughs> this first one says, the Bible says, slow to speak, slow to anger. And that's from, of course, uh, James chapter 1, verse 19. Uh, but the viewer says, but I have to admit, I am a bit of a hothead, and I often regret what I say and the way I say it. Will God just give up on me? I can't seem to get myself to calm down. This person's reaching out for help. Ladies and gentlemen, what, how are you gonna help him? What are you gonna say? Go ahead, Parker. Just, uh, <laughs> just today, I, it was, I uh, went to, you know, I started my day, got my coffee and I was in my car and I hit something and I get that anger coming up within me, right? I'm, and I'm often known in uh, communities and areas that I have relationships with. I'm a bit of a hothead myself, so I can relate to this uh, person very well. <laughs> Sounds like a confession. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good for the soul, isn't it? But um, so, I, yeah, I, I get very um, frustrated very quick sometimes. But then I realize, and, and I hate it, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's bad because you recognize I shouldn't have responded in that way at all. It was mm -hmm. all out of frustration, and it, it's a very powerful emotion sure, that a lot sure. of people struggle to grasp. But um, what I often have to help me when I um, kind of get in those fits of, of, of anger and rage and all those things, it is um, I have to recognize my fallenness. I set an expectation, one of myself being far too high, and I set an expectation of the other people around me far too high. I have to recognize that I'm a fallen person and that's why I'm experiencing anger right now. Mm -hmm. And I have to recognize that I set a person to an expectation that was nowhere near a level that was uh, realistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that oftentimes I get angry because I set unrealistic expectations out of a fallen world and fallen people just like myself. Mm -hmm. And when I sit back and I recognize and I can see that, it helps me really understand that this is just the world we live in. It's, it's nothing to get too angry about and it's nothing to get your, you know, everything and ruin your day or, or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And I certainly would say to the last part of that question, God will certainly not give up on you. That is, that is the key there. And mm -hmm. we, all, we all struggle with, with whatever emotion it may be. Absolutely. You know, everything has to be in balance mm -hmm. for it to be truly in, in its genuine form as God intended it. And... And well, one of the dangerous things about anger is we do live in a fallen world. So when something doesn't go the way we think it should, like you said, Parker, like we hit our head trying to get in the car or something, you know, that's not the way we thought it would go. Anger is, is the emotion we go to when we're confused or something doesn't go the way we want to go or there's a gap between our expectations and reality. Uh, we go to anger and that, that's why that can become very dangerous because anger is, is an explosive emotion. Yes. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's designed to be that way. And uh, when we allow that to be our, our default setting, which most, if not all of us do, uh, and when we get confused or some, there's a gap in there and that, that gap causes anger, that anger can burn bridges that we don't necessarily want, want burned down or, or yeah. can, can cause us opportunities yeah. that we would actually rather keep. And uh, that's why it becomes very dangerous. So my advice to this person would be much like what Parker said is, yes, understand that not everything's going to go the way you want it to go. But, but try to ask yourself, why am I doing this? You know, wh what, what am I hoping to accomplish? What am I hoping to fix with this volcano coming out of my chest? Mm -hmm. you know, wh what, what do I want that to fix? And if you're gonna be honest, the answer is nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, that, and that's when you know, you know I've stepped out of bounds and, and I'm, I'm about to, to uh, use a blowtorch to uh, fix a small problem and, and that's a bad way to go. Yeah. 
This question immediately made, made me think of Peter. You know, uh, I often regret the things that I say and the way I said it. You know, that was, that was Peter. Uh -huh. I mean, you uh -huh. know, he was chastised by Jesus more than any disciple. Yes. And because of what he said, it may not have been out of anger, but it was, you know, the same concept. And, and God just didn't give up on Peter, and he's not going to give up on us. And so I would challenge or encourage them that they're not, he's not going to give up on them, but work on the relationship mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. And he'll do what he needs to do for you. Pastor Bev, w w what I see is the, the viewer who wrote this, as well as Pastor Parker, were willing to be transparent. Yeah. They both admit mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they had that problem. Mm -hmm. Will you say that's a part I, of the, uh, the helpful solution that, sh that should come behind I it? I sure do, Bill. That's exactly why I was going to say that she should feel encouraged and Parker should feel encouraged that they recognize that mm -hmm. because, um, you know, before they had a relationship with, with Christ, they may have done that and not even thought anything of it. Mm -hmm. But then once you have that relationship, then you... I remember going to, when I first started my uh, my true transformation to become more like Christ or desiring that, mm -hmm. I went to my pastor and I said, I don't know what's wrong with me. I said, the more I want Jesus, the worse I'm getting. <laughs> and he, that, he smiled at me. And I thought, well, that's not, that's not a good answer. Why, why are you smiling? And it was because I was recognizing the sin. Mm -hmm. I was recognizing mm -hmm. it. And we aren't going to do anything with, with the wrong that we're doing until we recognize exactly. it. So mm -hmm. um, he will change us. He does and change us. Sure. <laughs> and I, I, as I mentioned, a big part of that is, is your expectations. If you walk into a fallen world expecting everything to go perfect, mm -hmm. you're yeah, going to get a lot of yeah. frustration mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. So, Parker, you will grow up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's already more grown up than, than I am. all of us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's more mature than me. If anger is your only problem at 19, Parker, you're yeah, pretty good. You're yeah, you're real good. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. it, again, that, 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 that admitting it, and that... Mm -hmm. That's a big roadblock. I mean, yep, you know, we're kind of laughing about and everything, but that is a big roadblock. And it may not be anger, but whatever that problem is sure. that comes between you and your relationship mm -hmm. with the Lord. Recognizing it. Recognizing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah, because I think, I, I don't know which one of you said it, but you're not going to do anything about anything you don't recognize. I think you said that, Beth. Mm -hmm. uh, until, you, until you're willing to rec not only recognize it, but be willing to recognize it, yeah, mm -hmm. nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. And it humbles you too, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Just when you think you got yeah. it all together, I'm a pastor, I'm going to school, <laughs> yeah. I've got yeah. it, and then yeah. the anger. So, and boom. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think that's all part of the, the working through yeah. us, working in our heart too. Yeah. Well, Parker, while you're on a roll, th this is a question we, we talked about <laughs> before we came on air. We, you said you'd like to address this first. Uh, why are there no books of the Bible written by women? No? Well, back then also we have to recognize uh, society had kind of different roles of people. And, and several of us kind of add into, add into that question there of saying, you know, well, women were certainly not to the same status as they were today, mm -hmm. viewed as, you know, property and, and marriage was a transfer of, of, you know, what was an object is what the view was yeah, back then. Yeah. So, and, but that's not to say that there weren't women that were alongside these, these writers that were giving insight, you know, and, and providing them with information and, and oh, yes. a better way of understanding. And maybe I often will go to my mother and my sisters as to saying, when I'm preparing a sermon, saying, how should I word this, right? Mm -hmm. And all those things. And I'm sure that some of the gospel writers also had to turn every once in a while and God used maybe a woman in the, um, in the lives of those gospel writers to say, here's kind of what, what is being said here yeah. and all those things. But as to why the titles of the books or maybe the books don't get full credit to some women that I'm certainly sure that some did help out in the writing process, I think it was more of a societal and cultural problem compared to kind of where we're at today. Well, mm -hmm. And we know that's the fact because we actually have books of the Bible titled women's names. We yes. have Esther, yeah, right. we have Ruth, yep. mm -hmm. and we have Deborah. You know, come to the New Testament, we have Priscilla and a number of women Paul mentions often as funding his, uh, part of his missionary that's work. That's right, so, that's right. So, so they certainly had a role. And uh, another thing that, I mean, I don't know how important this is, but a lot of times books of the Bible would be written uh, under the name of somebody. So it's possible some of the books we have now were at least contributed to by women, oh, yeah. if not ri outright written. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. so. And certainly contributed to the... the um, 
faith in general, faith in sure. God and who mm -hmm. and and how God can use you and you know with Esther and Ruth and um, so many other Deborah, Miriam, how he used them. But I believe I believe too it was the the culture of that time. Mm -hmm. Women were not in the limelight. Women were not to be in the limelight and. Um, you know, every, and most everyone was okay with that. That was the way that it was. But let me ask you, what women uh, in the Bible that you have read about uh, that you feel, what, what, are, what are some of those women that you feel need to be focused on even more to help out in today's world? With, with women, and not just women, but with problems in general. Some of these women were great leaders. Mm -hmm. They were great leaders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, what, what are some of your favorite women? Mm -hmm. Rahab. Why? One of my, why? 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 Because, and mention her background. Because I know I want to turn and like talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rahab, because she had such courage. Yes. She had courage Definitely. when there wasn't anything going for her, and she, she, it was, it was courage to do what she did to to hide the spies and and um and then to free her family because of it. And women had a humongous role in, in, in the entire biblical story. I mean, one of the primary female characters is Mary. And, uh, and, and, and I mean, she was just a young woman and, and, and the angel comes to her and she's like, well, you know what, whatever you say, that's what we're gonna do. And that's, that's a remarkable faith statement. I don't know of honestly anyone else saying that at any point. Anybody saying, whatever you want to do, I'm good with that. I, I, I mean, I'm sure other people made statements and of faith. life-changing. Oh, yeah. That is going to be mm. completely well, life-changing. And you have to remember, there's a reason why Mary's aunt and uncle are mentioned in the scripture, but her parents never are. Mm -hmm. She was mm. probably disowned. She probably was. So, 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 yeah. so the idea is, is that she never lost gathered. everything through this act of faith. Mm -hmm. so, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never gathered that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. interesting. That is very yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, we're, we're coming on, up on break time, but you know what I'd like to do when we come back? I, mm -hmm. I'd like to start with you, Bevan. Could you talk a little bit about the differences between Mary and Martha that Jesus recognized oh, no. about them? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll take a quick break right here, and we'll be right back okay. after this. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. We're back and we're, we're talking about uh, women in the Bible. And uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to ask you, Pastor Bev, for your assessment on this, for your uh, insight, the difference between Martha and Mary that Jesus brought about mm -hmm. between those two, not casting mm -hmm. one down, but mm -hmm. noticing the difference between the two. Right, w right. What do you have to say about that? Mary, or yeah, Mar Mary was the... I want to sit at Jesus' feet. I want to take in everything that he has to offer. I want to know everything about him. I want to listen. I want to feel. I want to be in the moment with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Martha felt the need to do, Serve. to do, to go, to be available, to make everyone comfortable, hospitality and serving. And, and, and it was very important to her. Mm -hmm. And like you said, not to put one or the other down. Now, Jesus does say that what Mary's doing is more important, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, at this moment. But I think he's, but he still called Mary, Martha to be who she was. Yeah. He still called Martha to be the server. It's that finding that combination. Yeah. Right. I it's mean, we all can't, we can't lot. sit forever and not do anything yeah, either, yeah, yeah. but there needs to be that time when you sit and are in the moment and that time when you do. I'm sorry I interrupted no, you. No, that's okay. I interrupted you. Mm -hmm. It's just that he was saying to Martha that uh, she had a bunch of problems going on. He said, you have many problems. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the one. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry. That's you true. You had many problems. And, mm -hmm. uh, and Mary has chosen the better part. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it just shows you the difference, I guess, e even among mm -hmm. women in the Bible. And I'm, looking, I'm talking about the way we were talking about the way women were portrayed yeah. in some writers yeah. and, and the like, and, and not, not mm -hmm. having a book named after them and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But look at the greatness of yeah. both of them. Right. Well, yeah, right. and, and the, really, the really cool thing about the story you guys are referencing is the fact 
that Martha culturally was the one doing what she was supposed to be doing. Mary that's was not. Right. Right. And Jesus yeah. said, not, no, no shade going to yeah, Martha, that's right. but Mary has chosen the better way. And yes. I bet everybody else in the room is like, I don't think so. Yeah. She yeah. ought to be in there making sandwiches or something. <laughs> I, I really think that's what that's the culture what the would have said. Exactly. Yeah. And, that's and, what I'm saying. No, women, that's what I mean. And the women were not supposed to be sitting at the feet of a right, rabbi. Right. And, I mean, and, and, Jesus, right. and Jesus affirmed her in that. Which, which really is, gives us great insight to how Jesus viewed women, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is amazing considering the culture he lived in. Yeah. Yeah. He was very, very, yeah. very countercultural. Well, I'm thinking about the woman at the well in yeah. addition to that. You, you know, the way he interacted with her, and, mm -hmm. and yes, he asked her to give him water, but you know, her immediate response is, you shouldn't be talking to me, you shouldn't be, yeah. you don't know who I am, and all these things, and, and yet he was very... Um, Untraditional, non-traditional. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I would say even yeah, a little above that, maybe yeah. radical. Uh, yeah. You know, in, in his reaction and his uh, conversation with her. And, well, even the but, disciples came back and like, "Why are you talking to her?" For? That's right. Yeah. They sure did. They yeah. sure did. Yeah. But what did that lead to? Yeah. And and that's where we miss, you know, because what did that lead to? You yeah. know, the way he interacted with her led to so much. Yeah, she went back to the village and said, I met a man who told me everything I ever did. And mm -hmm. their response was probably, a man was talking to you? I mean, that's yeah. probably yeah. what their response next, yeah. was. Yeah, next and, thing and, you know, and, big crowd. Exactly. Yeah. And, exactly. And because people wanted to see what this not typical thing was. And, and man, I mean, <laughs> big Jesus fan here, as you could tell. But, but, <laughs> I, but I, I just, to, to, to me, for, for Jesus to be able to make a statement like that, when so many people yeah. would be like, what you talking about, Jesus? I really think it just says a lot about the kind of ministry he had and the impact he had on people. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And it was personal. Personal, it absolutely. Was personal. Yeah. It was yeah. personal. And that's just like Jesus. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 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 Personal, yes. It gets personal. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, here, here's another question. Does God change his mind? Um, in the Bible, we have examples where it appears that God did change his mind. Moses in the 32nd chapter of Exodus. Mm -hmm. And this is where, of course, God was indicting Israel for uh, the sin that had gone on while Moses was up on um, Mount Sinai getting the Ten mm -hmm. Commandments. And, uh, and, and Moses said, well, you're going to blot them out. Take me with you. You know, take me, take me with him, that, that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And, but then he, he changed. Yeah, well, God, I mean, he it's changed. no secret. God is, we, we see God as a God of grace. You cannot show grace and not change your mind. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And, and, I, and I, I think that uh, what, what, what we see God doing, in fact, there's a, there's a passage, I believe, in Jeremiah, where Jeremiah, uh, where, where God speaking through Jeremiah says, stop writing prophecy down. You falsify it by writing it down. So he's saying, yes, I'm going to make proclamations, but I'm trying to change hearts here. I don't want to destroy you guys. I'm trying to tell you what's going to happen if we don't straighten this up. But uh, at the end of the day, I still want to show grace, which especially in the Old Testament is a little. Oh, yeah. Little, oh, yeah. Little, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but still, that's what he's trying to do is, yeah, I'm saying some pretty horrible things, but that's because I want you guys to turn away from these things that I want you to get away from, these damaging things that you see. And I want to show you grace. I don't want to see this destruction happen. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to warn them away from it. I mean, Jeremiah, that's why we call him the weeping prophet. Mm -hmm. He's not happy about any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so, that, and that's, so that's what Jeremiah is trying to communicate to them. I'm trying to talk you back from the edge, guys. Right. If I'm successful, yeah. mm -hmm. God is going to change his mind because we're not going to be destroyed. See that? So, and, so, yeah. And the writer, uh, the, the viewer writes here uh, about another example in 2 Kings chapter 20 about Hezekiah where God says, I want you to get all your affairs together mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you're leaving here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you're Can gonna we talk you, about the power of prayer. And, yeah, well, Can and we then, talk about that's what that Hezekiah did. He went, he went before God right. and he prayed, prayed and God yeah. changed everything and yeah. gave him 15 mm -hmm. more yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, again, and, what you said a moment ago, could you, could you just say that yeah, again? Yeah, he's about, a God of grace, and you can't show grace if you don't change your mind. I like if, that. If, if everything is about, you know, do what I say or hellfire and brimstone, sorry, Parker, uh, <laughs> then, then, then there's no grace in that because there's no, there's no transformation. I mean, honestly, repentance is a changing of the mind. Yes, it I'm is. I'm going this way, now I'm going that way. And, and, I, and I feel like uh, it's all about trying to experience Christ so we can change our minds or God can transform us from the inside out. And we've got to make sure we don't misunderstand changing his mind with changing his character. Correct, mm -hmm. correct. Amen. Because his character does not change. Correct. And grace is the key component grace. of that character. And so the things that, the references here are not references that, where he changed his mind, were not outside of his character. 
Correct. It's and, exactly right. right. And that is the key to that. Mm -hmm. His character does not change, even though the event may. And yeah. many times in these situations, it's showing his power, showing mm -hmm. who he is. Mm -hmm. It is showing the the uh, magnificent God, the almighty God that he can, this is gonna happen, but Lord, and he is able to change the circumstance mm -hmm. sure. mm -hmm. and change what the future is gonna hold because he chooses yeah. to, because yeah. he chooses to give that, but chooses to, to give that, that God grace. didn't come down to Moses and tell him that this destruction was going to come only to see Moses repent. Mm -hmm. You know, so God came down and, and offered and did that only to make it see, make Moses get to that state where he does need mm -hmm. to, to see that God is graceful. Mm -hmm. And God may have, you know, s implemented those, yeah. that, that what, he's, what he said of destruction's going to come and I'm going to have to refine my people once again by, by death and plagues and all those other things. Mm -hmm. But maybe God knew what he was doing by saying, I'm going to bring my people to repentance. Maybe that's because God knows the difference between a threat mm -hmm. and a warning. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's a threat if I say, yeah. if you don't turn around, then, yeah. but if I say, it's coming, that's a warning. It's a warning. And he yeah. tests yeah. us too. He yeah. doesn't, he doesn't, um, what's the other T word I'm thinking of? He doesn't, he doesn't, um, Test us. Tempt us. Tempt. 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 He doesn't right. tempt, but he does test. And that is maybe mm -hmm. a testing of, maybe, yeah. Um, yeah. for Moses. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And Hezekiah too, certainly. Yes. And absolutely. Yes. 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 absolutely. Yes. yes. Another question from a viewer. I grew up in a denominational church where all pastors went to seminary and were ordained. But as an adult, I am discovering that not all churches require this type of education. Is it okay to attend a church where the pastor has not been trained at a seminary? Well, I have a seminary degree, and I would say absolutely it's fine. <laughs> in, fa in fact, the way the world today, I'd almost say you might be better off. And I'm saying that as a seminary graduate. So uh, I, I think that there's, there is great potential in training, in the right kind of training. There's a great potential in learning and reading and, and, and getting all these things. But, but to say that because you managed to satisfy all the credentials and we gave you the piece of paper make, makes you el eligible to be an effective pastor, I do not agree with that. You, you said something when we were discussing this off camera before we came up to the table, that it taught you, seminary taught you yeah. more how to get yeah. information, to get data seminary, gathered, Both my college and seminary career were very valuable to me in that I learned how to learn. You know, sure I got a lot of information and that kind of stuff, but I, I today, if something comes along, I know how to get the, I know how to study and get the answer. I have the tools to do that. Uh, what, what seminary did for me is it gave me a, a toolbox that's probably a lot deeper than it would have been before, but it didn't give me a lot of the practical stuff that I needed to bring into the church. That's the difference. So I have the tools, but you know, look, and I'll, I'll tell you right now, if you put, a, put a, uh, a screwdriver in a mechanic's hand in my hand, that screwdriver is not the same thing. Well, same thing with a seminary education. I can put it in my head or somebody else's head and it's going to be two different things. Sure. And, and uh, what, what, what that is, is it's a toolbox, but again, you can do construction and you can do destruction with tools. Right. And, and, that, and that's the dangerous thing about it. Mm -hmm. to, think, to think that I have a seminary degree and I have arrived and I'm now ready to, uh, you know, take on the world, take on the world <laughs> that, is, that is not accurate. Mm -hmm. okay. That may be the first thing you learn in seminary. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. And, and if you it's, haven't arrived. Yeah, and and if, it's, if it's not, you, you ought to question your teacher about that. Yeah. <laughs> in, in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Being prepared is certainly a massive part of that, sure. of being a, a, of a minister or a pastor. You know, I am, I am of no degree or certificate from any institution or whatever it is, but I can still preach the word. And I, that's not to say that I don't have a mentor and mentors sitting right in beside me that are teaching me kind of where the landmines are and how to minister and how to mm -hmm. be that pastor. So it's certainly important to be prepared and, you know, it's be educated in those things. But you can, I find, do that a lot more different ways than just going to a seminary classroom. And I can yeah. tell you the most valuable mentorship that you would get from the three of us is from our experience, not mm -hmm. from our education. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Very Correct. Very well put. Yes. Very well put. Okay. Go right. Were you going to add to that? Um, I, I was not, I didn't go to seminary. Mm -hmm. For, here's a kicker for me. I didn't even go to undergrad. 
I unfortunately did not take that route right out of high school. And so um, when I started feeling the call to be a pastor at the age of like 50, um, I thought, what, what do you do with that? So I served in the church, but it wasn't, I just, it was, I was being called to do more. And so I was thankful at that time that the denomination I had been in was, had a path for a 50 year old to get to be a pastor. Mm -hmm. And so I've completed the schooling with that, mm -hmm. but it is the experience during those years that have gotten me where yeah. I am. Where, you know. The number one book that should be in seminary is a book that's written by a pastor finishing his first year pastoring, mm. <laughs> saying, this is what I learned my first year yes. pastoring <laughs> because I learned so much more that first year of pastoring than I did in seminary. And I was similar to you. I was older. I wasn't the traditional right out of high school. And, 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 uh, but I learned so much more um, doing. Now, again, I learned how to learn, mm -hmm. but I learned doing uh, mm -hmm. job experience. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I, I apologize in advance for this next question, uh, bringing it to you less than two minutes in the program. <laughs> uh, how do we really know the Bible is God's word? That's two, another. Two minutes for this, huh, Bill? Yeah. yeah. Less. <laughs> well, I, I, the simple answer is, is because it's to the status of time. Mm -hmm. How, how exactly. many other 2,000 year old documents do we even accept have having any relevancy at all anymore? Mm -hmm. One. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mm -hmm. it's the Bible. Yeah. Yep. To, to me, there is no greater test. Yeah, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. yeah, you want it? I mean, yeah, it's, it? it's a um, collection of historical documents written by eyewitnesses that were of other eyewitnesses during that time period, and they claim that the writings are not of their own, but they are divine. Who does that? Who writes mm -hmm. a book and says it wasn't me? It was God mm -hmm. writing this book. Yep. It was it was of divine origin, and it has, as Tim said, it has proven to be true time and time again, and we see the prophecies fulfilled time and time again. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. about a minute the left. The miracles, ahead. the prophecy, and the resurrection, we know he came back. Yeah. Okay. The fulfillment of the things that are spoken in the Word that take place or prove that it was God. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. think we need to be making sure we get that across more and more in this yes. last day and time? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. yes. Absolutely. 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 It needs, needs to be yeah. heard more and more, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because um, yeah. we're getting so close to the yeah. end, and when we, what we see is so unprecedented. Uh, mm -hmm. Can we, in terms of human behavior? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us for this program and last week. Uh, certainly hope it's been a blessing to you and our audience and continue to write us. We'd like to know how you feel about this group as well. Uh, what you send in your <laughs> yeah, question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right, so we get back, yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I thank you for being with us Thanks and it's you. really been a great joy. It's been yeah. real. It's been real. And we want you to continue to tune in week after week and send us your questions by all means. So until next week at the same time, I'm Bill Harris for this illustrious group here we have. And <laughs> those of us here at TV44, thank you for being with us. Bye-bye. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.